Um, our next uh, presenter is Sophie Ogan. She is a PhD student at the Department of Biogeography in Trier. And her presentation is about uh, population status and trends of Orthoptera in Rhineland Palatinate. Sophie, please. Where's the one with the pointer? Ah, okay. It's yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. And I am very happy to present to you today uh, a new study that we did in Trier, a resurvey study uh, on grasshoppers in southwest Germany. Um, this is part of my pre PhD project and the manuscript on this data are currently under review, so these are first insights for you. Um, I would like, oh, okay, this is not working. I would like to start my presentation with a little story that happened to me about three years ago at the beginning of my PhD fieldwork uh, when I did uh, my first surveys in fields. And um, I was walking around with a net looking mainly for wild bees, but also for spring grasshoppers. And it was around midday when an older man approached me and asked me whether I'm looking for butterflies. He might be very familiar with this situation. And I told him, no, I'm not looking for butterflies. I'm looking for um, grasshoppers and wild bees and that we have this new project at Trier University where we try to understand population trends for these two species groups and what's driving them. And he was very interested because he was coming in this specific area here uh, for around 30 years. Uh, and he told me that for recent years he had a very strong feeling that as especially insects are declining in this area. And this is part of the reason why we wanted to do this project, because we wanted to transfer this feeling, what a lot of people have, into proven statements or proven data. And there's another reason, uh, sorry. Um, most of you might be very familiar with this graphic, um, the population trends for European grasshoppers uh, based on the uh, European red lists. And there's a very high number of deficient data. And we wanted to be part of um, solving or increasing uh, or decreasing this deficient data. So what did we do? Uh, we combined 13 individual studies into one big historical data set. Um, all these studies conducted their fieldwork between 1985 and 1991 and individually each uh, study over a period of a maximum of three years within a year of one to two surveys per year. All had very comparable methods so they used mainly visual and acoustical methods and as you can see here in this graphic on, on the right side, the largest part um, of the studies are based on two individual studies, uh, the one by Carsten Renker and Christoph Fröhlich. And uh, both are also co-authors of the recent manuscript. I think this is important to know. And uh, we added these smaller studies that you see up there to fill spatial gaps because we wanted to cover the whole area of Rhineland Palatinate. And yeah, so we added smaller studies, but all of them are very comparable in terms of methods. And what did we do today? We resurveyed these 199 study sites. Um, we started our field work in August 2018 and ended up in October 2020. Um, we used the same methods and tried to be as close as possible to the original studies. Um, but we had a bit higher per year effort. So the original ones were with one to two surveys per year, so we conducted at least two surveys per year. The first one to cover mainly the tetric species in the spring, and a second survey in July to August. Uh, in case we had a very early uh, second survey, we conducted a third one. Um, Additionally to the grasshopper species lists, we also sampled environmental data such as vegetation structure, vegetation height, but also uh, land use type and land use intensity. And all our data are available at observation.org. And now already coming to the first results. Uh, we had a higher uh, species per number, uh, species per site. Um, so an increase in alpha diversity. 
Um, of a total of 49 of other species that we recorded, uh, 13 are significantly increasing in site occupancy. That means that they are now frequent or more present on sites that they were in the past, and we found five species to decrease in site occupancy. The biggest winner here on the right side, Cotypus dorsatus, the species was pretty rare in the past with around 5% uh, presence on our study sites and now it massively increased. So we have them now on around 65% of our study sites. Um, so yeah, the species is like the biggest winner. And um, a bit contradicting, um, we found also losers and the saddest story is the one for Bicolorana bicolor, um, the pr uh, species was formerly present on around 45% uh, of our study sites and now it decreased to around 20% and this might not be the end of the story, so we should really look out for this species. And I mentioned earlier on this slide that we had an increase, a significant increase in alpha diversity and we also looked at beta diversity and uh, we found a contradicting pattern here. Um, so we see in these lighter grey colours um, the better diversity for the past and in the darker colours the better diversity for today. And you can already see that there is kind of a shift in this, um, in this graphic. So zero is here indicating complete dissimilarity and one is indicating complete similarity. And we found um, that there is a significant shift, so species, communities in our study area getting more similar, which underlines that we should not only look at alpha diversity, but also taking other indices into account. Um, a bit additionally to the discussion that we had earlier this day, uh, we also looked at ecological traits, and we also focused here mainly on uh, the specialists in the darker colors and the generalists in the lighter gray colors and the mobility of a species um, between low and high mobility. And uh, we found that specialists with low mobility uh, on the far left side have all negative trends. How you can read this graphic? We calculated the relative change in occupancy. We did this by setting the presence of a species in the past to this 100% reference line here. So this one here is the reference and then we calculated the le relative change to this reference. And yeah, as I mentioned, um, all specialists with low mobility um, have uh, negative trends, so they are declining. We found significant differences between generalists with high mobility and specialists with low mobility and a trend um, between generalists with high mobility and generalists with low mobility. What we think uh, could indicate that the mobility of a species, as Thomas Hartmann mentioned earlier today, um, is uh, more important um, for a species to um, colonize new habitats and therefore also for their population trends. But um, what we think is also very interesting about this um, graphic, and Axel uh, mentioned that earlier, is that specialists with high mobility have very positive trends. And two very good examples for this are Stetophyma grossum and Uripoda cavalistens. Both species are classified um, as specialists, um, but they massively expanded during the last years. And uh, we know from species in general that they can be quite specialized at the edge of the distributional ranges. Um, but when you can think of that climate change might have wood in these ranges and the species expanded, they might not be that specialized in our study area anymore. And speaking of climate change, um, we also looked at the altitude as a proxy for climate change. Um, we did this by calculating the mean altitude that the species occupies in the past and today, and then we looked for differences between these two um, times. Um, we found that all Orthoptera species are moving upwards, so they had higher uh, mean altitudes, and we found seven species to significantly move upwards the hell. Um, of these seven species, three are also expanding in occupancy and one is declining in occupancy. 
And there are two very interesting uh, patterns behind this, which I would like to illustrate on this following graphic. So you see in this A plot, Umotestus viridulus, species massively declined in occupancy, but expanded in range, uh, in, in altitude. And what you see is that um, the species um, loses the sites with low altitude. So the species is moving up the hill, but losing the lower sites. And we know that Omotestus viridulus needs some degrees of moisture for the eggs. So these lower sites might not be the suitable anymore as they were might uh, be in the past. So the species is driven up the hill um, and losing these lower sites. And we mentioned Udipoda carolescens before, a species expanding in all um, areas. And um, this species now occupies higher altitudes, but it's not lowering lower, uh, losing lower sites. So um, it's just, just expanding and seems to be, at least for now, um, a climate change uh, winner. Yeah, so very interesting, two different patterns of altitude shift. And in the last uh, part of my talk, I would like to give you a very brief introduction into the environmental parameters that we worked with. Um, these are just a few slides and I'm very happy to talk uh, during coffee breaks uh, more about this. Um, so in the first slide, I would like to present you the changes that environmental parameters um, did between the historical surveys and today's surveys. And what we found is um, that the forest uh, in our study area increased significantly and also the tree cover, which is uh, very likely to be connected to each other. Um, we also found a higher maximum vegetation and an, uh, an increase in medium land use type and also of mesic grasslands. And in a bit contradicting pattern, we found uh, significantly reduced dry and semi-dry grasslands and nutrient poor conditions. To put this in a yeah, like bigger picture, we had um, higher and more denser vegetation uh, now compared to the past and we're losing these sites with uh, drier and more open patchy bare grounds. Um, but we had the highest number of species in the dry and semi-dry grasslands, which is um, also known for Orthoptera species. Um, we also looked at um, habitat management. Um, we mainly focused here on grazing and mowing, and um, we found grazing to be highly favoring a lot of species. And um, very positive to mention is that Bicolorana bicolor, remember, the species with the strongest decreases is very highly favored by grazing. So um, species, uh, sites with grazing, uh, we don't lose the species um, as often as we lose the species on a site where we have no grazing. Um, we also looked at mowing and we see, found that a lot of species are uh, very positively affected by mowing, um, but all these species here are also increasing, significantly increasing in site occupancy, which means that the degree of mowing uh, might favor the expansion of the species. But we have to say that uh, land use intensity is not very high in our study region, and especially on our study sites. And when you can think of um, like more intensive um, regions where we have uh, like more frequent cutting, um, then the orthoptera species might not be as favored um, anymore. And in the last part, I would like to present you the results of the protected areas because we had an almost 50-50 distribution between protected and unprotected areas, uh, unprotected um, status of our study sites. And we found um, four species to be highly favored by um, the role of protected areas. And um, the nicest thing about this for us was uh, to see that Omocestus viridulus and Bicolorana bicolor both are very strongly decreasing in our study area, are um, favored by protected areas, meaning that they're decreasing not that often as they do with outside of protected areas. So protected areas might buffer their negative trends um, and yeah, so this is uh, good news for protected areas. To sum this up, um, what are the take-home messages? Um, we found winners and losers uh, in our study area, but we found more species expanding than they are declining. 
Um, we found higher alpha diversity, but a decrease uh, in beta diversity, which should be taken into account. Um, we found that the mobility of a species um, matters and can even cope to a certain degree for the ecological specialization. Um, we found altitude expansions, um, mostly caused or driven by climate change. Um, we found that uh, proper habitat management can favor a lot of species, especially grazing for Bicolorana bicolor, and that protected areas can buffer, um, especially the negative trends for uh, decreasing or declining species. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sophie. Questions? My name is uh, Thomas Tunagratki. Uh, it's not a question, it's more support because we made a very similar uh, study the last two years. We resampled over 100 plots from the 90s mm -hmm. and we have surprisingly similar results. Mm -hmm. So the increase of uh, species per plot mm -hmm. is significant. Yeah. Also some homogenization. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, Plots with few species um, increased in, in species richness and very species rich uh, plots decreased. So it's mm -hmm. more, all plots are now quite similar. Yeah. We have also sharp other species, for instance, the most increasing were um, Mecostetus and uh, Rusbolia. Mm -hmm. The most decreasing species were Homocestus hermodalis mm -hmm. and Rufibes, for mm -hmm. instance. So some, but also winners and losers. Yeah. And also the, the winning specialists are the mobile, so it's yeah. very much supporting. And, but we had one, one uh, thing, we, we could also compare uh, densities and we mm -hmm. had a uh, significant decrease of, of density of habitat uh, of grasshoppers per plot. So yeah. do you have any, uh, any incidences to shifts in the densities of the species, not only of the distribution? Uh, yeah, we had uh, the one by Christoph Fröhlich, um, had also like rough est estimations of densities. And uh, we looked into this and um, it did not show any uh, difference to the presence absence data that I presented here today. So, but um, the larger part of the data set uh, didn't include any density uh, in the past, sadly. Um, so, yeah, but we recorded today um, also this density estimations um, so we hope that uh, in the future um, this could be taken into account yeah but uh, thank you very much it's very interesting that uh, the studies are producing the same results uh, Axel Hochke is just a very short thing to add we had one data set uh, by Matthias Weitzel who used uh, something like a box uh, well box graduate approach uh, and we tried to use the same method at, as he did. And actually the densities were so low on the mm -hmm. sites that we couldn't compare the data. So we actually yeah. didn't proceed this way. Yeah. So I think you're right that the densities have decreased significantly. Last question. Thanks, uh, Oliver Havlicek. Uh, so you mentioned that uh, alpha diversity increased mostly mm -hmm. and beta diversity declined at the same time. So I'm just trying to get this right, I'm not an ecologist, but um, and then you said that many highly mobile species were able to colonize new sites. So if we have, let's say, the same two or three high, highly mobile species colonizing many new sites, then the alpha diversity will increase at these sites, but beta diversity will decrease, is that right? Because it evens... It's all the, yeah, the, if okay. these species are colonizing and um, we have all the same species on the, on the plots and we might lose like one or two species which are specialized, just, just an example. Um, and now we have like, even if we have five species and we had formerly three, um, but all of these five species are the same, then we have uh, reduced better diversity, although we have higher number of species per site, yes. Cool. So do you know which species these are, or have you tried to find out? The, for, for what one? Well, the, the what, so did you try to find which species caused this increase in alpha or decrease in beta at the same time? Is there, is there any way of finding out which species might be these colon highly mobile? I, like I would just, specific? 
uh, thing that it's uh, mostly the one expanded uh, massively, which I think, like um, Cotipus dosatus, um, Rosiliana rosili, mm. Udipoda carolescens. Yeah, these yeah, species. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, thank you.